My focus to places where I put fakers in comas longer than daytime soap is. Hit us up with what we said wrong, what you think is actually the real meaning behind us. We appreciate it. Cause I got my back in the mail, I'm happy as hell. Bitches down the party and it's the first of the month. Right on, man. Shady. Oh shit, speaking of West Coast. Stay stunned, but you broke. Why you threatened? Why you threatened? We the top because it's fresh, you got the same. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for a, a really uh, vulnerable album from you. Mm. And I really hope that this helps people out there that have addiction, mm. that have family issues, that have alcoholism. And I really hope that that is your mission with this album and that you can help save lives and just make lives better. <laughs> Bigger versus better. It's not always one or the other, but sometimes the trade-off is unavoidable. It's clear that more is not always compatible with our other goals. Like most choices, this one usually works better if you make it on purpose. Yeah, more isn't always better. Yeah, that's Speaking why. of a 21 track album right here, how <sighs> coincidental. But there is, we did check it as, <coughs> there's like four, <laughs> there's like four skits though, so. Yeah, there's an intro, a couple of skits, so, a bonus track. So we're looking at really around 15, 16 tracks, but okay. still, motherfuckers, stop making these long ass albums. We ain't living in the 90s, 2000s anymore. Make, give us these 10 tracks, quick and sweet albums. I'm Alexander Sandals. I'm Alexander Man. We're Jungle Beats. We review music. A lot of it. And talk shit. That too. You're supposed to say a lot of it too. That would have been good. Anyway. It's good. <clears throat> I heard a lot of rumors about Book of Ryan being a uh, very good album. And we're about to get into it. All, 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 all I'm going to say is that shit. Royce to Five Nine says, he has said that he thinks this is his most introspective oh, album. Very important, yeah. He said it is probably his best piece of work yeah. ever. And he said he poured his heart and soul into it. He's never been this open for because yeah. he normally comes from other people's perspectives as much as his own. But this is pretty much mostly himself. So we're expecting... A very revealing album. Mm. That's all I'm gonna I'm say. I'm glad you mentioned that. Beautiful. Let's let's get this intro into woke. Let's get this circus on the roll. <laughs> Drink more water, or you might die. I gotta start wearing white, man. All this shit always stains. Say, hey. yeah, but you look so clean. I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning. Distraction free. No nagging ass bitches. Okay. No begging ass niggas. With all the shit that I've been through in my life, I'm just thankful to God that I even woke up this morning. Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. This one's for those of you just ain't woke yet, hotel. You rich, but you broke, nigga, just don't know yet, hotel. These rappers ain't woke yet, security back them, hotel. Okay. That's that your ass is bleeding. That coat is hot. Massacre your whole rap allegiance. Oh, yes. This one's for little bro and big bro and come back from the stove yet. Mm. Take my focus to places where I put fakers in comas longer than daytime soapers. Any calendar day, I'll Halloween like late October. I'll bury these niggas up under the devil's playground. Playtime's over. Mm. That taught me to focus on what's inside y'all and not the surface. Who oh. was surviving America? That's the way that's from. See? Intro. It was kind of just like him just being very thankful because he's had so much traumatic and so much experience, like a lot of everything in his life so far. So he's just so thankful to wake up and be alive. It's a prelude. It's just a pre. It's just, just a, a preface to what we're about to hear. Yep. Um, first track. Dope. Real dope. Very real dope. Short, precise, real banger beat. Beautiful opener. It had like a sort of marching army feel to me, with the with the vocals looped in the back. And Royce's vocals over the oh. top was just beautiful. It was just like liquid. It was water. He it was just perfect. is one of the most amazing artists to just hear flow and just rap over a beat. He's, he's like honey, man. Oh, I, could, I could honestly hear Eminem coming in on that too. Coming in? Yeah. Mm. Uh, coming all over it. And then that, that little skit just then. <laughs> we noticed that it uh, had similar things to Who Will Survive in America, a skit which is on My Beautiful Dark was a fantasy. Now, we don't know where that comes from though. I don't know no. what, what it originates it's, from. It's definitely from some famous... Black man, I assume, that had a, a big play in history. All right. But, uh, but they even had the same bongos going on there, if you notice, too. So maybe that's Royce just giving you notes that and saying, 
my my experiences are very similar to this or I relate to this. Mm. So you, so far, that's really dope. I'm very very impressed so far. And yeah, I'm seeing what else you got. And vocally, what he's saying has substance to it as well. Like I'm really listening, and it's yeah, it's no superficial shit. Same, same, same sample. Oh yeah, true. Oh, this is fucking dope. This is a dope hook. This sounds like Kid Cudi a little bit. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Hold up, wait a minute, guess what I'm gonna never do? Okay, Show so much respect to you, and I feel like we're friends, so now we no longer competitors. He switched it up. You belong to a regretter, I do what I want to do, they do what I meant to do. Everything you think is the same is a fucking lie. It's nothing I can say, G, that is real. Right. We all know what's coming up next, man. You're looking at a chiller, it's like a panda killer, a caterpillar. Don't tell me when I'm supposed to rap a chiller, especially when your favorite rapper ain't even half a zealous, ever still a chiller. Panda pin, I'm like I live when they're blinking a lot. You copy me, but you're not. Beautiful. I'm just like, don't overplay the hook. End it. Oh man. What a fucking great track, bro. Holy. Oh damn. All I gotta say is, M. Ain't that some shit what we needed, right? Why wasn't that type of shit album worthy? Because the feature, he wants to, he wants to play up the feature. Oh, that's a great feature, great beat. Uh, I like, I like the the feature on the hook too. Uh, green. I thought that was really nice. It fitted well. I, I liked Royce's first verse. The second verse, I liked the switch up too. He switched it up. But I didn't like the way he ended up with a bit of singing. Like you know, at the end of the second verse, Royce just like did a bit more of a singing type bitch, and it kind of was off beat a bit. No, I didn't. I didn't recognize that. Uh, well, that, I didn't really like that. But the rest of the song's dope. Don't get me wrong. I'll listen to this shit again. Oh, imagine being Royce and getting that verse from Eminem. You send it off AM. Oh. won't be on this, and he gets this, and it's like, damn. I, I honestly believe Eminem would have been in the studio with him because you remember that Eminem and Royce are very good friends. Oh no, shit, slaughterhouse. Did you know the story behind Eminem and Royce? Quickly. Nah. Well, basically, when M started rapping, Royce and M had a huge beef. They they like they hated each other. Huh. They, they they like had they have huge beef. Because basically when M was starting to get famous, Royce was starting to get famous and M pretty much squashed him. That's why Royce's career never took off in a way because M fucking squashed him. Hmm. Well, I don't know if that's exactly true, but that's how I uh, portrayed it. But ba basically over time, they squashed their beefs and they became really good friends. Well, guess what? Who made a better album? Eminem last year or Royce this year? I At the moment, these two tracks is better than all of Eminem's fucking album put there together. There you go. This is a beautiful track, man. Oh. A lot of substance to it. And, and the mm. metaphor, it caught a lot of metaphor. So the track was called Caterpillar, Caterpillar. right? And they intertwine a lot of lines with the metaphor of, of growth, mm. of being, turning a caterpillar into a butterfly. Yeah, yeah. Right? And I thought it was really intelligent the way they all did that. Yeah, that's a dope voice. Yeah, fuck with me. Oh, production's on point, man. Oh, beautiful, right? Yeah. Does he produce? Does Royce produce? Oh. Uh, I don't this think is just so. how I saw him The industry said I had to be an alcoholic who be having threesomes, be doing acid and having seizures. You know, holy Jesus of flows, eat a goat. Bad. That should be my tag. <laughs> I'm from the sh the boy you niggas talking achievements. And all I see is prep. Round the streets today. I'm about to freak away from having to eat serene. Eating out big serene. I do the Floyd Mayos. So many men shopping in women's section. It ain't no ladies left. These niggas crazy, yes. They playing crazy like the Chappelle sketch. Wayne Brady F. Fuck me. His bars are on point, man. Is that it? Mm. Oh. I almost think he's, he's saying oh. so much that I think it lacks direction. Like, there's so much there. I might need to listen to it another 10 times to feel it, but... What's the thing? Every time I was picking up a bar, he'd already on to his next two or three. So my, my mind's a slow mind. Like, I can't keep track of all this shit. But every time I heard a line, I'm like, fuck, fuck. Because normally when you listen to rapper, you're like, there's one, two, three. You're mm. like, oh yeah, filler, filler, filler. Bar, filler, filler, filler. He's like, bar, 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 bar. I'm just like, holy shit, the references. And just the way he, like, flows. 
I love the beat. The beat's like a very West Coast instrumental type yeah, there. You like can hear like the game on the very uh, yeah game, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg sort of stuff, but like new school type of ish. That was that was beautiful instrumental. Great wordplay. I love that track. That was. I just I just thought of like conceptual direction. I mean, it might be my fault because it needs a track may need to be listened to a lot to really get the concept. But that seemed all over the place lyrically to me. Not to say that the lyrics weren't of substance. I like Boogie. He just got signed. He just got signed to Shady. <laughs> Oh shit, speaking of West Coast, god damn! Yeah, this, is a, this is a frequent instrumental, but it's sick. I'm no longer a prospect. I'm oh. what you call a veteran legend, man. I'm a prophet. Uh, you ain't no artist, you ain't no oh. Made to inspire gossip like Shade Room or like Fossa. I dreams of fucking the RB chick. Then I found out that RB chick already had a dick. Already slept with your favorite rapper, already we sick. You start as an artist and turn to alcoholic and quit. <laughs> This is a dope fucking track. Oh. Bring the punches back. Oh. It's sweet and fake woke niggas that had to come to that. This is boogie. I love promoting elevation really... in the space that all my brothers have. Cause yeah. it all my niggas is Look how we get to this yet. Man, I turn basic into intricate. I kill you with my simple shit. No tweeting while we kicking it. Don't tell me what you finna get. Oh. Silly, you could drown without a membership. Oh. What you done? That's so dope. I know, right? I know. It's so much. I'm gonna let you go first. <laughs> oh. Okay. Thank you. There's oh. so many things to this, right? Oh. There's so many layers of greatness to this track. Oh, the bro. West Coast instrumentation's fucking. <laughs> it follows up so good from the last one. 100. percent Because the last one was like slight West Coast. That was full West Coast. And did you notice? When they when they said dumb, yeah, yep, dumb, they, they, it goes high pitch. Yep, yep, yep. Beautiful little thing. Oh. Third thing, features, fantastic. Boogie was amazing. If you don't know Boogie, check out Thirst Forty Eight One and Two. Even tracks like Bitter Raps, like Fuck Me. Boogie's amazing. I'm so glad he got signed. He's a great artist. His tone works really well on that oh. track. The thing about Boogie though, if you check out his track Oh My, he he knows how to do like a, a hype track, but still add really good depth and lyrics to it. Hmm. Um, easily the best track so far. And you notice, we could have fa where tracks usually go wrong is that they, the trans, ugh, they don't often switch it up into like they don't switch it up mm. right. They keep it. And what he did so well is that three quarters of the way through, he switched it up. Yep. Beautiful transition to the end. And the ending switch. Yeah, exactly. And the best thing about so far about this album is all the tracks are short, sweet, saying what you need to be saying. No fucking extra hook. No fucking extra <sighs> production. Keep this shit going, Royce, and you got one of the best albums, man. That was the best track. Uh, fuck we, me. We, fuck. we got who are you skit into cocaine. Take me, Royce. Take me, Royce. You've earned it. Mate, you've earned it, Royce. Take me. <laughs> and then I was about to ask him about the abuse of my mom, and I fucking blinked. How can I write a paper on my father when I don't know who he is? Shit. So, I guess the first question is Who are you? So it's to his father, the Book of Ryan. Yeah. It, it's conceptualized from being to his father. As soon as he blinked, he went to. So before he was talking to his father, Trust and then he blinked, and then what? He was speaking from his perspective as a kid, because he said, "Don't blink." And then when he blinked, he went back. He didn't want to go back to that because it hurt. That's what I got from it. It's really hard for me to make sense of something on a first listen when Royce is saying so much. But uh, to speak of the production as well, the production was still really beautiful. I'm loving these short, concise tracks. That was a really good track. It hasn't been a bad track so far. Of course, type in the comments and, uh, you know, hit us up with what we said wrong, what you think is actually the real meaning behind this. We appreciate it. But this is us <clears> just trying <throat> to interpret on a first listen. In replying to his son from the previous track, Who Are You? Royce gives his son a piece of his life never told before. Oh, so it's the Royce's son. Oh, so basically maybe he never knew his dad, but then he's, he's going from a basically 
so instead of from his day goes to him as a father and it's basically going I'm not going to make the same mistakes my father made in a way so like he's gone this is what I've done to my son he's like I gave up this lifestyle and these drugs to make sure that you have a good life and that you can feel loved because I never felt that as a father that makes more sense it does because I was confused I'll be honest wish I could be childish for old times either y'all were trans or Z or y'all were Voltron stole bikes with Ike until the time that he stole mine told mine she told me what comes round goes round she just spoke me and want not to be bothered we go and leave the house and not be by her right right there I never said that life was fair Failure. Was always ungrateful, always had bad news Always into the latest gossip, always was trying to show her father her nudes That shit not cool, stop right there You know when karma catch you, everything in your life gon' fail Shit, another great track I didn't catch too much, I'm sorry, I was really zoned out for that one I didn't see much, um substance to that track compared to the others i don't see much mm. i don't know i disagree i kind of got an overall vibe because the, the ongoing thing for that one is i don't want to be a failure so i'm assuming that what he was talking about was kind of overcome overcoming obstacles in his life because he's constantly like thinking about what if i fail what if i do this so i feel like that's what the track was about i, I think it's just storytelling on there it's very personal you know something that um i didn't really connect to maybe that's why yeah i still thought it was a dope track Instrument is definitely instrumental is definitely different compared to the others too. Yeah, it slowed down a bit, which I think is about is fair. Oh wait! Been gazing down the river in it's anticipation the of the album. thrill of the dizzying rides at the amusement park. Nothing compared to our family trips. My uncle shook hands with the manly grip. All this hand-me-down shit I had had an uncanny fit. All the gangsters I had in my family had me any bit. Uh, on our way to that black amusement park, wood roller coasters crack sold on plastic scooter cars. Mm. Uh, some of my better times I share with you Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up Shit. Stuck inside a bag Look, twist the cat, lift the bottle back Swig it, dig it Ten inch rims on my mama Civic Ten inch woofers in the trunk To be specific, they pump Rather the license plate plus the windows tinted My real life drama plus fickle niggas Thinking they done heard the best of I made it out unscathed and now I sunbathe with my son in Tanzania and sun rays thinking about them days. Yeah, man. J. Cole absolutely does his thing right there, man. I love the way he enters it. He just sings it going, wake up, wake up. Like he really just lets the beat flow with his vocals. And he, I, I love J. Cole singing. A lot of people don't like J. Cole because obviously he does have the best voice, but just the way he <clears> sings, you can just hear the soul in his voice. I think the imperfectness of it oh. is what pushes its vibrance yeah there are many rappers that can't sing that well that i that i love like uh mac miller's another one j cole uh who's another eminem is also another one too like rappers that can't really sing that well but when they do they just do it in like a style Kanye is the king of it exactly and i love i love all of that shit there are a few that i don't but most i do and um I, that's the only track i've heard of this album i saw the video as well beautiful track roy's talking about how his first experience with the Boblo boat, be it like, you know, sneaking out, having a few drinks, losing the virginity, all sort of influenced the way that he grew up and how he changed and how like his innocence was taken away. So really beautiful track. Uh, really, I really fuck with it. Very like, for your eyes only reminiscent. Yes, which yeah. is why it's a great feature that J. Cole's on there. Yeah, and J. Cole does thing. Great production. Fucking great shit. Great shit. Great! It's great! It's great, Josh! Oh! oh. Legendary. That's just there gonna make a legendary. This shit here gonna make a legendary. Probably the first track I didn't really like. I like I like the concept of it definitely. I liked how he I like choosing women, 
sorry, choosing his career and being legacy. Yeah, like I turned down these bad bitches because that makes me legendary. I choose to like work harder and not 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 give in to these other side things because that that makes me legendary. Right, it's a very simple concept and probably one of the weaker ones on this album, <sighs> but it resonates with me. Um, well, that's yeah. the thing. If it res- I feel like his still his flow on that track was Is really seamless. Yeah. Uh, I love the other mm-hmm. style of production with like the organ into Electro- the choir. The electronic too. No, I didn't like that bit. So yeah, I like I like the organ into the choir. The oh, and then but then the, the electronic comes in. And I'm just like uh, it didn't. That sort of beat doesn't fit Royce, especially just after Bob Lobo. Yeah, he's definitely tr- trying. It seems like he's trying a couple of things on this album right now. Yeah. To fit the concept of the the, the content yeah. of the lyrics. First track I haven't really liked, but it doesn't matter. It fits in. So it doesn't though. I mean, concept wise, it does. Okay. Yeah. Because it's personal and uh, doesn't uh, really. Uh, maybe it was being too nice. Uh, either way, I want to. You hear the transition well mm. from the last to this one. This is gonna be a banger. I can tell. Oh yeah, with these features. Yo, Big Sean better be on this. That's a dope song. Yeah, three big, great, great features on there. Pushes on hook duties. I wish he had a verse. But yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I would have rather just given the hook to the, the dude who did the. Who's the. the... It's, uh, it's, I can't remember his name, but obviously a sample from Jesus. Um... Yeah, I, I reckon give the hook to him and give Push a verse. Um, Jadakus was really nice in there. Jadakus is always a nice feature. Royce was still probably the best to me. And Fabulous. I didn't even notice him because I just don't hear him anymore these days. Mm. I mean, Fabulous back in the day had a, he was the king of mixtapes, man. You know, so New York, Yeezy, Weezy probably don't like me. Like, fuck, man. I fuck with that. That's a good that, track. That was a dope track. Fun um, track. Yeah, man, not much more to say on that. It no. just feels good. Pump and beat, feels good. Amazing. Featuring Melanie Rutherford. Or Rutherford. Hello! Okay. You can't leave them clothes in the washing machine too long when they get done washed and still put them in the dryer. Doing that make the clothes stink. Man. Never ask for much when I sit down and say my prayers. All I ever, ever wanted was to be amazing. I don't miss my big brother so much. He went to prison so much that I don't think I recognize him these days much. But I'm always know what to get him from the ice cream truck. I wish we had a switch up on that one. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind one either, but I, I still think it's a good track. You're just telling stories from him as a kid growing yeah. up in his neighborhood. And it's kind of fitting because the, the beat has that kind of like kindergarten feel to it. Huh, that's like, like, like dun, innocent kind of. Dun, dun. It's like, like you know, at the start of movies and you're walking down the, the street, like, dun, dun, yeah. dun, dun. Like you're on your way to work before a big accident sort of happens. And I like how the beat sort of does sort of go, right. When he starts speaking as well, the right. feature's really nice. I thought it was a really, a really dope track. That adds a more juvenile touch to it, mm. right? That it is about adolescence. And I kinda, yeah, I kind of liked how I was minimalistic in that regard and came in. I mean, I would have, I would, like I said, you, you said, I wouldn't have minded mind, like a bit more of a switch up, but it, nonetheless, I think it's a still a dope track. I, I like that one. Robert Glasper. Oh, I fucking love Robert Glasper. He's very, um, does a lot of production, does a lot of jazz. Plays all the instruments. My problems ain't just working overtime. Eight and nine jobs work. All these wanna scheme ass niggas on basketball shorts, son's jean ass. I look you right in your eyes, say you motherfucking right. Don't bother me with adversity. I can't get my ground and keep calm. Cut all I think about the days is mine. Shoot me down like a mug to something. Fuck with me and say I've deceived you. I'm afraid of you going to college and not acknowledging I'm your father because you're not proud enough. But I fought hard to make sure you never see certain things that I'm a product of. Mm. One thing not related. 
you would never, ever, ever better than me in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> was that his song at the end? I'm like, yeah, right, sure, maybe. That was a beautiful track. Yeah, super sincere. You know, just wanted to mm. like being a father and all the insecurities that come along with it. Yeah, one that hit me the most was just like when he's like, uh, I'm really scared about you if you're going to hit that alcohol because coming from an alcoholic's perspective, like he might have had a few clashes with with you know, life and death situations or clashes with just knowing how bad addiction can be and how it affects your lifestyle. So mm. just knowing that like, you know, he's like his son's already taken up rapping, like he said. So what if he takes up other things that I'm doing as well? Yeah. And, he, and he mentioned on a previous track as well, how scared he is of, um, of addiction becoming a thing for, for his son also because his dad gave him that addiction as well. So. Right. So really ties in with a lot of the other tracks we're doing. So really great track, great track. Definitely super cohesive with the album mm. thing. And super self-aware at the start where he says, you know, he's self-aware. It's like, I don't, will people like what I'm about to create? Like he was, sounds insecure about the music he was going to put out here when he's like, fuck it kind of thing. Mm. Power. Oh. Hey. Oh. Anybody I ever seen to it Straight from the haters Got a nice ring to it I guess every superhero needs to be music. No one's meant to have all that power The clock's ticking, I just count The next track, please You want what for Christmas? It's Christmas time and I'm coming home Daddy's acting all crazy again Fucking Christmas beats Why they always got fights so much? Damn. Oh. My face roll, me and my bros in a panic state. If that's the case, yo, I can't just stay around. All he ever wanted to do was fit in with us, and y'all bought him a pair of fake Timberlands and put him in a real Timberland box. I'll never forget them boots, they was called rugged outbacks. Now mama trying to cover for him. She afraid my daddy gonna punch him again. Ended up unconscious, a broke arm and a toothless chip My big bro got a lot of emotional problems He feel that we was all abused as kids He saw mama get dragged down all kind of stairs Like a rag doll when he was two in this Turkey's done in the Montgomery Oh, room. that was a dope verse Dad has just been awakened again You been out there drinking again What the fuck I tell you about coming in my house With this disrespectful shit, nigga, where the fuck you been? Every time my daddy in his drawers and he's standing in the hallway Mad at somebody, I swear to God he got the same strength as Superman my father hit him so hard, his body hit the stove, the oven dough hit the fucking floor, the turkey fell out the oven hole and landed near the stairs. Now daddy's standing over Greg talking about, nigga, you ain't hurt, get up, get up. And then here come Vish talking about, dad, I don't think you gonna get up. Then mama went down near the stairs. Because he taught me respect and discipline. Consequences for your acts. We didn't even, I don't, I didn't even really say. I don't need to say nothing, you know. It's evident why that song is powerful, oh. why that song is a great great track. It's very clear if you listen to it carefully. Which I did not, but I missed a lot. I don't know, could you could you feel like he was painting you that picture of a story? Did you, yeah, I got the picture everything? I got the picture of him beginning as an like him as an alcoholic. And then it was also maybe his father, but then also coming from the perspective of the Montgomery family yeah. as well. So yeah. I got like those three and I was like it's powerful. It just goes back and throws back to the, the track of why he fears alcoholism impacting his family's life. And also, it goes back to... Did you notice that when he said when he was addicted to cocaine, he said cocaine the same way he did on the previous track as well? So, a lot mm. of little ties and throwbacks to make the album even more cohesive than what it is. It's a great pickup. The beat, the production of this album has been uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, Shady, you can definitely hear Eminem's influence throughout this album because all the instrumentation is very similar to stuff he would go on also he'd have a mix in. Uh, Royce's flowed amazing. I don't know if there's still, is there more tracks? There's definitely more tracks. <sighs> that, that feels like a closer though. There's plenty more tracks that's, actually. That's gotta be one of the best tracks. This nigga just blacked out and starts swinging a knife at the dude I drop. <laughs> I'ma kill you motherfucker! And start cutting the nigga. I look at him, he looks back at me. Prison bars just come in between us. Ryan got a record deal, did you hear Greg? Yeah, I deal with a record every day that I got for calling myself Protecting Ryan. Thank you for sacrificing your life so I can have a better life. Greg, is that what you want to hear? Strong friend. I remember 2003 out here screaming, we next. 
I was ripping that 300 rockin' my Lexus GS When I was nine, see my father beat the shit out my mama I'm smiling right now, I'm trying not to cry about it Alcoholic, I just spent 5,000 trying to buy a bottle You probably thought she gave in to the plot of Satan's sin She got demons greater than you and I And this message is too denying and it's shady You say we friends, rumors spread about me that ain't true That's how the fake do If I'm a strong friend, then what the fuck do that make you? They laugh at me because I'm different but I laugh at them because they're all the same. Ah. Kurt Cobain. Well, Alice committed suicide. Mm. Fuck. <clears throat> so that was kind of an ode to how addiction can get you down the road of death. Yeah, definitely. And, and then comparing it to being there for someone. I think so. And being also, a strong friend for someone. And also, Royce maybe dealing with it himself. Right. Um, fuck. The skip before them was really good too. I love the way the he... The skip was uh, really good. I love the way he illustrates these visual... Oh, these visuals. Just like the way yeah. that like he was there with his brother and he, you know... I love how at the end he's just like... You know, his whole life Royce is probably... Well, through through life where he was behind it, Royce probably was like, I should feel thankful for my brother, I should feel blah, blah, blah. But then he got to a stage where he was like, that's what he wants to hear. Like, he didn't have to... He didn't have to pull the knife out. Right. He didn't have to hurt that person. Mm. So it's just like him coming to terms at the end of it being like, no. So... Really good. We don't stand for anything, and so we fall for anything. That's him. I don't see anything. I think it is. It's him. Damn, I never heard him sing like that before. God bless America. Don King, nigga. That's very clear what that track's about, just um, the current state of. Uh... Black on black violence, or yeah, or sorry, police on police on black police violence. Police brutality, yeah, the political issues we're going through. Mm. You know, that, that's a very, you know, makes sense. Shout out to Royce singing though. Yeah, that that's the most. <laughs> I never heard thing. him sing like that before. Because before in tracks I was like, that's a feature, that ain't Royce. But here it's just like, shit, is that Royce? He's pushing his vocal boundaries here. Ooh, you know you like them violins, bro. Violin, piano. Organs. Thanks to Marshall, I'm sober doing what I enjoy doing. I'm putting chat and chat on, had to leave bad forward to him. I stuck to my promise to mama, stay focused. Double my time drum, I'm trying to vocally smoke you, you will be missed. I'm fly as a dive in the sky in the harness. Anyone alive sleeping on me can die in pajamas. Police call me a threat to society, though I am a promise. I was born a ball with sugar coated all the way. I'm living, put me in a great position. Now. Every time they hear me, they say, Ain't nobody did this now. I'm a fool, they don't want me to blue. But every single show, they hand a light on my own. My way they pay my dues to what he's on. That was dope. Is that it? No. The album? No. Oh. Now we got two more. I'll be honest, with that track, I started daydreaming and I didn't hear a fucking word. <laughs> it was it was actually a great track. Like I really yeah. I really enjoyed that. I it, fucked with the production. It's a common uh, I don't know what instrumental it is, but it's commonly used throughout hip hop. Which one? The one on this track. Have you heard it before? The one we just heard? Mm hmm I heard a violin, I heard drums, I heard pianos. That's all I heard. <laughs> I'm sorry. Legit, I, I'm... I don't think it's your fault, though, right? My I think it is, but it's not. My attention span's, like, gone now. I'm trying to, like, like... I legit really tried to focus, and then all of a sudden, my thought wandered somewhere, and then it entered a daydream, and next thing you know, the song was over. This so. is really... This album's still under an hour. That's the thing. Yeah. It's just a lot of tracks to yeah. digest. F sorry, guys. <laughs> I try. I really try. I'm looking for... I really try. Booze already made me lose. I can't go out like Amy Winehouse. I like that. Very self-aware. And it's a nice track. And Ashley Sorrell really stepped it up. I love their vocals towards the end. I wish I remembered them. That's okay. Is that T-Pain? The fuck? Yeah. And shove it. Everything is everything, but I need a better rain. Okay. I'm never it's the first of the month. I got my bag in the mail. I was panicking yesterday. Now I'm happy as hell. And then We are That's 
I think it was fair to say this track probably didn't need to be on the album. This could be a loosey goosey. I think I know why it's on the album though. Why is that? I remember seeing something in um, Rooster Five. Now I remember a while ago he wanted to get T Pain on one of his albums, and T Pain turned him down. So I think this is kind of like Royce being like, uh, like getting that. I think he's just always wanted that T Pain feature. So it's kind of like this is like because of this is his most his most introspective album. It's him just saying like like you know. I got a feature that I really wanted. Well, I felt- in that case, I felt forced. I felt like a forced feature towards the end. I feel like what's been said, what's needed to be said about this album has already been said. All the important stuff mm-hmm. is out the way. Except if you, the first of the month, why is this called that? Because people get paid usually the first of the month. I think it's a very pretty shallow concept. Nothing really. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a dope song still though. I think the beat's really good. I thought T-Pain's feature was really well mm-hmm. executed. Interesting. I, I could listen to the song again for the feature alone. Very refreshing, but I agree with it in terms of what the album's about. It's already said what you need. I think it could have ended on the, the track we had before. Or the one before that. Yeah. Before that. <laughs> um, now, the only, the only reason I'm going to play this Caterpillar remix featuring Logic is because Logic said this was the hardest feature verse he's ever gone in on. Really? So, wait, wait, so this is featuring Eminem and Logic? No, it's featuring Logic and um, King Green. Oh, so hang on, so basically Eminem's verse will be replaced with Logic's verse. Yeah, I imagine so. Shit. So, I, just for that point, I want to give it, I want to listen to it. Maybe it's just my pigment, maybe I'm being ignorant. Maybe it's all a figment of my imagination and exaggeration, exacerbation oh. and an illness. Yeah, fuck all this division and lyrical incision. It's time to unify, cause hip hop is beautiful as you and I. And it doesn't discriminate if you black or white or you Christian or Muslim. It just love them and put nothing above them. I'm here to talk about suicide and depression, anxiety, mental health and all that other shit you scared to mention. Yeah, I can talk about the millions of a mass, but it's so great being a white rapper. White, 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 everything. White man, being white, so great. Are you ashamed to be black, motherfucker? Fuck you. Fuck you, you piece of shit. Mixed biracial fucking cut. I'm pretty sure that, that was recorded when he was um doing everybody. Yeah, because he got rejected from BET, not performing there. I obviously had a problem with that. And also, why didn't he just do this for everybody? Instead of having instrumental tracks in between where he just talked... Talking between songs like he did there, that was very passionate. Yeah. It worked. It did. Uh, but I didn't, I don't know. I can see a lot of people having a, a lot of problem with this song, especially some of, the, some of the lines. Like you said, people be obsessing about my race. Well, Logic, some people would say he obsesses about his race, often mentioning it on dozens of lines and dozens of occasions in interviews and in songs. So I just think that maybe a bit hypocritical, some may say. I don't know. I think it's good he keeps mentioning it because I think... There we are. I think everyone does mention it. Look, look, look at everyone pays him out about it, but that's because everyone's mentioning it. But did he? Me- I'm pretty sure it's because he started mentioning it first. He made it known. Most people. No, didn't it started. Know it. It, no, it started off with interviewers because people found out about his mixed race, and then every interview, that's what all people would ask. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. I, I believe that's true. I believe that the, it wasn't him that thought about it. It was the it was the interviews that he got, and it was the fans and everyone basically just being talking all about it. All right. If that's but how it started, obviously, I, th- I think obviously he did let it get out of hand because he mentioned it a lot. But I think because when you're struggling through shit like that, when you're in a, like in hip hop and you're a huge figurehead and you know you're getting a lot of slack, but you know that a part of your culture is black. But when you try to express that, you get shot down because yeah. you're white. Yeah. I can get why he'd constantly be rapping about that. Like plus he's had a hard life, man. Like a lot of people give logic shit for that. It's become a meme to shit on him about that. But I personally think that you know. He has a right to do that, and he's, he's doing it. I thought it was a dope verse. All I can say is I'd take Legendary out. I'd take uh, First of the Month out and just add them as, as bonuses. I think the... As, as for me, I'm always production over lyricism these days. I've got to say this album is very well produced. Uh, a good mixture of instrumentals. The only one I didn't really like was Legendary. I thought that was the weakest track on the album. Um, I thought the features were all pretty well used. I feel like there wasn't really a feature I thought it was weak. Pretty, yeah. much, pretty much every single feature on here did their thing. That's a good point. And I think that um, Royce did good to outshine them as well. I think the only feature that outshined Royce was mm-hmm. Eminem. That's I'm, fine. He's I'm, a fucking Eminem. And I like how towards the end of the last track as well, Marshall, uh, Royce said, thank you, Marshall, for keeping me sober throughout this whole album so I can do what I love while being sober. He does pay homage to him on multiple tracks. So it goes to show that Marshall did have a lot to do with this album. Because a lot of the production sounds similar and also he signed a shady record. So I think Marshall, I think Royce was just like the Eminem was just like, look, man, I really want to put out a really great album, but without the hindrance of my abuse. And I think Eminem would be like, I've been through that. I'm sober. Let me help you so I can make a great album like Revival that you can make as well. <laughs> I mean, and Royce was like, oh, hold on, hold on. I don't want to make some shit ass album. Eminem, 
Eminem, I want to make a great album. I don't want to make no revival. Eminem was like, what, you saying revival was bad? And Royce was like, yes, Eminem. That was a shit album. I think the problem was that he didn't have a camp around him telling him it was bad. Eminem needed Royce next to him so Royce could be like, that whack, that whack, that shoe whack. That. No, no, straight up, straight up. Eminem had some of his... He, he's still he's still there. His flow and lyricism is still there in that album. I want to talk about right, Royce. Give, okay. Let's give Royce the platform. I'm just sorry. Revival was such a letdown. Anyway. Well, book the reviews book out there if you want to watch it. The, the, the sentiment behind this album is really solid. It's really positive, And it's... Uh, helping Royce get through a lot of his past issues mm. and insecurities, which I definitely love. Mm-hmm. Um, this album's too long, once again. It that's, is too long. That's the that's the issue we continue having with albums. There's a, there's probably about five tracks that, four, three to five tracks that don't need to be on here. Mm-hmm. Could be on a disc too. Other than that, this is a good album. Could have been great, but right now it's good. I agree. It's a good album. It's not a great album. It's... I haven't listened to all of Royce, Royce to Five Nights of Discovery. All I've listened to is Street Hop, uh, one of his mixtapes, which I Lays. forget. Layers. Layers was dope. And um, uh, obviously Bad Meets Evil. Street Hop was really good. That released 06. That's the first album I ever heard from him. Huh. So, actually, correct me if I'm pretty sure it's 06. Um, but yeah, highlights production. Uh, some really, like, his storytelling is, of course, amazing. I wouldn't miss so much. Best tracks were definitely... Uh, Woke. Uh, God, Godspeed, dumb. I think it was Godspeed the one with the. What was the one Ashley with the? Sorrell, Godspeed. What was the one with the real fucking? That's Godspeed. What was the one with the really banging West Coast production with the keys? Probably. Voted, you might as well. Is that, that's dumb. Dumb was the best track to me. Dope man. Dumb was the best track, followed by uh, uh, the one where he went. Was it outside? Protect no power. I think power it was Power. Matt Power was the longest one. Power. Power and uh, Dumb were the best tracks. And Boblo Boat. Sorry. I've, I know I heard Boblo Boat before, but that track is fucking amazing. So. Let's wrap it. It's a good album. Could have been great. Too long. Could have... Even some tracks that did tie in there. You could have cut them out. I feel like... You've, you're already saying so much on here. I know you. I know you want to imp- include everything because it's like... It's your book. It's every- what did we say at the start? What did you actually read out? What did I... I can't actually remember. It was talking about how more isn't always the best. That's actually really fucking dope. Literally, the, the thing you read from here... Out of all the things I could have read. Right? Perfectly applies to this album. Yeah. That's a, that, that's a fucking... That's fucking dope. Um, this video is already going to be long as fuck, so... I don't want to touch more on it. I'm probably going to go back to this album. Um, Definitely. Probably, probably going to skip a few, but I, I want to get more and more into Royce's story and see what I missed and the stories that he's telling. And thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for a, a really uh, vulnerable album from you. Mm. And I really hope that this helps people out there that have addiction, mm. that have family issues, that have alcoholism. And I really mm. hope that that is your mission with this album and that you can help save lives and just make lives better. Well said. Jungle Beats. Jungle Beats. Very well said. Take me, Royce. Royce, you've earned it, mate. Royce, you can take me now, mate. Oh, I'm ready for your big 10 inch black cock. Put it in me, Royce. Okay, we're done. Put it in me. Cause you too busy trying to keep up with the nigga who be trying to keep up with the nigga who be chasing all of these bitches with all the artificial body parts. Look at too synthetic. Look, if yellow wolf, tell a nigga daddy, want you dead, you be dead. Click as I can finish blowing the Romeo Juliet after I finish sending a nigga at you who be throwing Tony Romo's out of a ready to risk it all.